So what am I doing in the tinnitus field? So I, I am a researcher and so I am working uh, on both uh, tinnitus patients and animals. So on animals, um, I'm doing some fundamental research on the basic uh, physiology of the auditory system. And in particular, I am um, studying the auditory cortex. So using micro electrodes. So with micro electrodes, we can record uh, the neural activity of single neurons. And uh, so we can assess the sp spontaneous activity. Uh, so this is the action potential, the activity of neurons. So the, the neurons um, talk to each other uh, using so action potential. So we can, with micro electrodes, so we can record so these action potentials. And so um, in the tinnitus field then, what we are doing is uh, we uh, try to produce, induce tinnitus in animals using noise trauma. We record the neural activity and we see if we can record some aberrant neural activity after, for instance, the noise-induced tinnitus. So this is what I'm doing with my uh, animal research. And I have also a research on tinnitus patients. And on tinnitus patients, so I'm using mainly a uh, psychoacoustic approach. So we are trying to um, develop tools to characterize the tinnitus characteristics, tinnitus properties. So for instance, what is the pitch of tinnitus, can tinnitus be masked, or um, can we produce a residual inhibition of tinnitus? And so residual inhibition of tinnitus, it's the phenomenon, it's the suppression of tinnitus after a prolonged exposure to a sound. So we developed a new way uh, to assess uh, the, res the residual inhibition. So we try also uh, to develop clinical approaches based on acoustic stimulation. And uh, so what we would like to do, actually, it's to uh, combine uh, acoustic stimulation and also relaxation uh, approaches. So at the same time, simultaneously, so it's original. We have uh, another line of research, and it's on um, studying the, the potential relationship between uh, tinnitus on one side, uh, acoustic shock or noise trauma, and the middle here. Because so we are developing um, a model or an hypothesis suggesting that the tensor tympani, so the, the tensor tympani, it's a muscle uh, in the middle here. And so due uh, to an acoustic shock, uh, to a loud sound in the environment, so the, the tensor tympani can contract. The over contraction, the potential of a contraction of the tensor tympani can damage the tensor tympani, that muscle in the middle here. Uh, that can, that may produce inflammation. Okay. And the tensor tympani actually is innervated by the trigeminal nerve. So, which is interesting because so the, the stapedius uh, muscle which is the other muscle in the middle here is innervated by the fascial nerve. So this is a completely different uh, universe. To come back to the tensor tympani, um, so the, the chronic uh, inflammation uh, can activate then the trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve can then send pain, painful uh, sensation to the brain. And through the dorsal cochlear nucleus, so the trigeminal nerve actually send inputs to the dorsal cochlear nucleus, and through then this uh, multimodal integration, this chronic activation due to inflammation can also produce tinnitus, okay, pain and tinnitus. So that is uh, potentially important for patients because many patients report strange feelings in the ear, ear tension, ear fullness, pain. So pain in the ear, pain around the ear, pain in the neck. Uh, and in addition, so vertigo also, and in addition, tinnitus. So it's so th this model might um, account, explain for all of these symptoms. And I think it's about it. We hope uh, our research uh, can lead to uh, new treatments.
how to refine treatments. So I, I talk about a uh, potential uh, approach based on acoustic stimulation. So we investigated then the, the residual inhibition and with our approach, a uh, new approach, original approach. So we can measure residual approach, uh, residual inhibition relatively quickly. So then we can find quickly the optimal stimulus uh, that maximize the residual inhibition. Once we have that acoustic stimulation, then we can use that acoustic stimulation to stimulate for hours, so the subjects, and we know that uh, residual inhibition can accumulate over time. So when uh, the subjects, they listen uh, hours, uh, the, the stimulus, so we want to use uh, that kind of stimulation for treatments. And so actually we are launching, launching a project right now with my, with my students. And um, we also um, want to develop a clinical approach uh, potentially to cure and not managing only the symptoms. The tinnitus and pain related to the tensor tympani in the middle here, if there is you know, some dysfunction of that muscle in the middle here. And so I have also another line of research. We are investigating after noise trauma then um, the molecular mechanisms of plasticity. And we have found that after noise induced hearing loss, the um, uh, GABA inhibition, okay, so GABA is a, a neurotransmitter. And so it uh, suppresses the activity of the auditory system. And actually, after a hearing loss, GABA can become excitatory for some, for some reason, complicated reason, not so complicated, but maybe it, it will lead to new pharmacological approaches uh, to treat, manage uh, the tinnitus patients.